Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hey. How you feeling today? Uh, not bad. Uh, can you hear me okay? I think so. Let me know. Do I need to adjust the volume down or up a bit? I'm good. Try it now. Okay. I think we're good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually talking to you from bed. You can see my headboard here. Um, so, but I'm doing all right. All right, I'm going to take you full screen. Yeah, that's, that's like the easiest applause you can ever bet. I'm in bed. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Can, can you, you can hear us okay? You can hear the audience? Yeah, no problem. Here, let me, I'm going to try it. Hopefully, I won't disconnect anything if I do this. And let me tell you, the 17-inch MacBook is heavy. Gary. Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> can you see him waving, Derek? Yep. All right, that's no not every, I don't have the widescreen uh, eye cam, I guess. So, you were, you were at Gnome Dex 2005 and 2006, correct? Yep. I was there uh, representing my employer, Navrick, who I still work for, although I've been on medical leave since February. Is there a way you can, hang on just a second, Derek, can you bump up the treble maybe, turn down the bass? I'm just trying to clear, clear your voice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, you have a very bassy voice. I can get a little closer if that helps. Uh, whatever's most comfortable for you. Okay. All right? <laughs> believe, believe you me, you, you, it's, I'm very, uh, not to take away from any other presenter here, but, uh, you're, you're my favorite Gnome Deck 7 uh, uh, person. So well, Derek. I, I'm glad to be the, uh, the ambient floating head on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us your story. I mean, obviously, I mean, we know bits about you through your blog, but obviously it's, it's kind of changed over, over the months. And uh, some of us discovered that uh, you ended up, uh, well, finding, well, I'll let you tell your own story, Derek. Okay. Well. You know, I, I was uh, your typical Gnome Dex uh, geek, came here in 2005 and again in 2006. Last year I wrote the uh, Gnome Dex theme song, um, which you can find somewhere at my podcast. Uh, late last year, with some various symptoms I'll avoid describing, I went to the doctor and at the beginning of January, uh, I got diagnosed with uh, colon cancer, which is kind of unusual because I'm 38 and usually they don't even start screening for that until you're 50. Uh, so to make a rather long story short, in the next few months I had uh, small surgery in February, I had a bunch of chemotherapy and radiation in um, April and May, and then I had a major surgery that removed a big chunk of my intestine uh, at the beginning of July. Uh, got out of the hospital a week later, had some complications, ended up going back. So I was in hospital almost all, all July, which is why I'm not at Gnome Dex, because I'm still home here and I'm really tired. And basically, getting up and walking half a block means I have to lie down. So uh, I couldn't make it to Seattle. Uh, the reason I guess you're having me talk about this is that right from the very beginning, I was posting everything to my blog putting stuff up on Facebook once I got on there, uh, putting stuff on Flickr. And what I found about that is that contrary, well, in line with what everybody in the audience here already knows, but contrary to what a lot of pundits might say, the internet is not at all an isolating thing that turns you into a hermit. What I found uh, writing about having cancer and, you know, it's heavy duty stuff, I've had so much support and so much uh, sympathy and, and advice and useful stuff from people I know, people I've never met, people from all around the world uh, that I never would have had contact with. And it's also one small thing that's very convenient is if I post stuff on my blog, um, I don't end up getting a whole bunch of phone calls and my parents don't get, I get a whole bunch of phone calls of people saying, so how's he doing? Because they, they just say, well, go read the blog. And there you go. Has that been a, a challenge? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming on yourself, but what about your family, Airdrie and your children? Well, uh, <laughs> the, the day I got diagnosed, Airdrie said, so um, are you going to blog this? And I said, of course. And, you know, so is she. So is my dad. My dad actually started blogging uh, when I went to the hospital so that there would be some updates even when I wasn't updating. And um, so, you know, there, obviously there's always a, uh, a thing with, blogs and photos and whatever else you might put up where you sort of have to decide where the line is. You know, what are you going to talk about? What are you not going to talk about? 
I've been pretty far in talking about almost everything, and I think generally my family's been good with that. Um, because sometimes I'll write stuff that, that's hard to say in person. Or, you know, I'll have, if I'm feeling really crappy, which I sometimes am, I may only have five minutes in a day where I feel decent at all, and it might be at some weird hour I can get something on the blog, and it's a little easier than, you know, trying to describe or, you know, I may not be in a position where I feel like talking about it at another time. So sometimes it's even, um, it's even a good way to communicate with my immediate family, even though they're in the same house. So it was originally a colorectal cancer, and yeah. it uh, apparently has spread? Yeah, well, the, the main tumor, there were two of them, uh, basically right down to the bottom of my uh, large intestine. So they've removed that whole chunk. I have a nice, I don't know, it's a scar about, well, I can't, probably about that, you know, Maybe, on, the, uh, on the big screen, that's really big, months. Derek, by the way. Uh, 25 staples, which I got to keep when they took them out. Um, and uh, so they removed that chunk and rerouted a bunch of stuff. Uh, but it does turn out that there are some small, what seem to be what they call metastases, basically cancer spread into my lungs, which means I'm going to have to have more chemotherapy once I gain some weight. I've lost about 50 pounds since January, although I've gained a few back, so my cheeks aren't quite as hollow as they were. Um, and uh, so I've gained a bit back, but I need to perk up a little bit more before they can hit me with chemo. So that'll probably happen in September or October. So yeah, I'm maybe halfway through this whole treatment process. It's, it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, I can imagine. So you have, like during the day, I'd, I'd assume most of it is, you said, taken up with sleep or just general bed rest? Well, it's, uh, it varies. I mean, it sort of depends on the day. Right now, I've been out of the hospital for a couple of weeks. And, you know, I'll get up in the morning and I may feel fairly perky, so I'll make myself breakfast and maybe watch some TV or surf the web or something. But uh, usually, you know, if I go have a shower or do anything, or if I have a doctor, uh, once it's your own, you know, the statistics are only mean so much. I mean, it, it, there's a significant chance I could be dead in a couple of years or five years or less. It's hard to say. It really depends on how my body responds to the treatment. They've gotten rid of the main tumors, um, the source of stuff. The question then is whether the chemotherapy and whatever else they might choose to do and anything else I might try uh, in the next few months will deal with the stuff in my lungs. And if it does, uh, it may make it go away entirely, and then, you know, I'll recover and could live a long time. And if it doesn't, then it'll spread, and who knows, it'll kill me, and who knows how long. And, I, you know, I guess I've had enough time to think about that that I guess I'm okay with it personally. It's just kind of the difficult thing is, you know, thinking how my family and everybody I know is going to have to deal with that if it happens and what it'll be like. I mean, I don't know. Has it, uh, I, I'd assume other blo bloggers have reached out to you, other bloggers who have had cancer or are still kind of in the throes of it. Yeah. Uh, one guy, um, he's not actually a blogger, but uh, his name is Jean Hus and his wife, Laurent, in Paris. And he got diagnosed at pretty much exactly the same time as me and stumbled across my blog. And we've been emailing back and forth. He's actually a little bit further ahead in that he had the surgery and he doesn't need the extra chemo, so he's probably going to get better faster than me. But it's been interesting sort of communicating with somebody who's in the same kind of stage in a totally different country. Fortunately, they can write in English because my French isn't that good. Um, is this legal, by the way? Like, hmm? since you're in Canada and I'm in America, is this legal, what we're doing? Do you know? I presume so. Uh, you know, if the SWAT teams drop in, um, I will, I'll say bye quickly. But uh, I think we're okay. Um, as, I guess as long as I'm not trying to socialize your medical system, we're probably okay. Fair enough. Um, All right, Derek, I, uh, we, we have someone here. Who we got? Hey, Derek, it's Dingo Hello. Stewart. Nice to see uh, you. It's nice to see you, too. As you know, uh, Jay Stewart is my husband, and uh, all your friends here from BC and from Olympia in Seattle, we sure miss you. And yeah, I wish I was there. It's not the same without you here. Uh, Chris and Fonzi are doing their best to yeah, well, keep their spirits up. It is their up, conference, you know. Yeah. So uh, in your honor, and you must tell this to Airdrie, we are going to try to do one of the natural wonders for her. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, good. A little to know. cryptic message there, but um, we sure miss you. And we, we're glad to see you. You look great. Well, nose and everything. Yeah. 
you know. But I just have to tell people I got in a fight, that's all. Well, you did, but it looks like you're winning. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that I wanted to let you know is that your friends here, we support you 100%. You, your family, the company is taking care of you, and we really do miss you, and we're not giving up on you. Thanks so, a lot. I'm not giving up either. No. We really want you to know that uh, we love you, we miss you, we wish you were here, you know, and, but you are here with us. Well, not, tell you so what, if any, of you are, if any of you are coming up to Vancouver for bar camp next weekend, I'm going to try and be there. Yep. I might be in a wheelchair, but uh, we'll see. Well, we'll make sure we bring you some medicine that's good. Okay? okay? <laughs> We've got lots of that okay. up here. <laughs> now that, I, I'm pretty sure is... Well, you know, be, yeah, you don't need to bring that kind of medicine to Vancouver, I tell you. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we need Nomdex in Vancouver then, I don't know. Mark Canner, what do you think? I'm sorry. Um, where is he? I haven't heard from him. Uh, Robert, did you want to come up? You're, okay, you're making more so. Um, in terms of Airdrie, uh, who's also, yeah. she, has she been blogging about this as well, like publicly? She has, as I mentioned, she has, my dad started his own blog. Actually, the thing about her blog is that she's intentionally asked me not to link to it from my site even though it's, it's a public and out there. She'd like to keep it a little separate. My dad, is uh, he's happy to have his. So uh, I guess if you don't know, my, my blog is penmachine.com. And uh, my dad actually called his penmachinedad.blogspot.com, but it's linked off my site. Um, so that, it's been interesting to have him blogging and sort of see his perspective. Airdrie obviously has hers. A lot of my friends have been you know, uh, doing stuff about it. Um, so the, even there, you know, like I said, there are things, as you know, that you'll write down in a blog that you might not say to somebody face to face, or that you wouldn't it wouldn't occur to you to say face to face. So sometimes it's a good uh, good place to start a conversation. And in fact, we've done a few other things too. I've been on, in addition to this video conference thing, I was on um, CBC, our uh, our. National Radio Network here in Canada, the Vancouver Drive Time Show had me on, I think, three times talking about this, then talking about blogging about it, because they found it kind of weird. Um, Why and, weird? And the same, well, just because I guess, you know, in, in a sort of mainstream sense, I guess there's still a matter of, you know, do you really talk about cancer in this kind of detail to anybody who wants to know and anybody who might stumble across it? Um, and for me, the answer is yes. And I guess I was, you know, saying the same sort of things, the same kind of benefits that I've been getting out of it. And there hasn't really been a lot of downsides. So talking about that in, in uh, uh, you know, radio and other media like that helps other people talk about it some more. And maybe some people will go get screened and, uh, you know, discover it early enough to get it dealt with rather than having to go through all the crap I've gone through. All right, we got Kalia. Who's next? Hey, Kalia. Hey. How's it going? Um, all right. Well, I'll make sure to say hi to Airdrie. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I guess I'm going to come out. I actually don't talk about, I'll talk about this um, on my, like personally, but I've never said it really publicly. I had cancer about five years ago, so I really empathize with where you're at. And um, thankfully, I'm okay. It's five years. I'm good. But, um, and there wasn't all these social tools, or at least I wasn't using them. They were in their infancy. And there's a guy in Seattle in the nonprofit tech community who had cancer. And he used wikis and a whole set of social tools to help coordinate his friends get care. And I'm curious how you're, besides blogging about all this stuff, are you using social tools to help get support from your network? Well, not so much directly in that um I found that the, the the care I've been getting up here has been excellent through the sort of traditional medical system so far, uh, and I have a lot of friends who you know that I talk to directly. It, so I haven't really needed to use it use any of these tools to try and coordinate my care as much as just to try to um, you know get support and talk to people and and feel connected and not so alone in it. 
Um, there are some resources that I could use, but I haven't even really looked at like message boards and other things of people who've been in a similar situation. To me, part of it is that it's kind of exhausting. To, you know, I'm going through enough being doctors and doing all this stuff all the time that reading about it in my spare time is like the last thing I want to do. Well, you know, I'll it, watch Mythbusters or something. I guess my question. I guess my question was more um, like, are you using a wiki to get your friends to sign up to volunteer to drive you places that you need to be, or like that? That was more his use of it, more his direct network supporting him rather than like yeah. talking to random people, which I found really weird too. Like I didn't do much of that. I I'm not finding I do that because all my family, uh, everybody that I know is here. You know, I have my my, my parents actually live just next door um, you know my my aunts and uncles and relatives are all nearby so I actually don't need <coughs> to sort of have a wiki to coordinate this stuff basically I can just talk to people my wife is a teacher so she has the summer off uh, so I have needed to coordinate those kind of resources just because they're they're all right here which I'm very it's, it's very lucky for me thank you Khalil. Um you know, I, I guess my only, uh, I guess, personal um, connection with any family member, at least directly with cancer, was my grandfather, paternal grandfather. Um, it's, it's definitely something, I'm sure, I'm just by a show of hands, how many of you with family members have cancer, have had cancer? It's, it looks pretty much, looks like 50, if not 75% of the audience. Yeah. Um, Kind of a shocker. I gotta admit, it was a shocker seeing you at uh, EMP for when we had the fire alarm in downtown Seattle. Yeah. There's. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's me and you when we're together. Fire alarms get pulled. I don't know. Well, I mean, we saw each other then, and then I guess there was uh, your wedding, ah. and then I was. That was basically right before I found out what was going on. That was like my last big hurrah outing before <laughs> before I was a cancer patient. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure how to take that, but I'm glad you could be there. It wasn't your fault. No, I, you know, I've done many things in my life, but that's, I'm very glad it's not. Um, yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's awkward, admittedly, but, um, you know, I'm glad at least to be able to have you virtually here. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a different kind of gnome decks. Good, I would say, for the most part. Um, and I typically, t I tend to stay away from any kind of net conferences and pulling people in. Um, but it was something that I, r I was hoping to have you here, but you know, even though you couldn't be totally, completely understood, I'm glad that you could you know, be present today. Um, I'm almost afraid. Uh, I'm, I'm now um, 34. Um, mm -hmm. I'm almost afraid to go into the doctor to have a physical. Um, if I remember right, you kind of discovered it uh, I don't know if you want to get too graphic about it, but it I'm wasn't. happy to get graphic. It's just a matter of what people are comfortable with. Um, honestly, <laughs> I think there's only one way we're going to learn, and yeah. you know that's through yeah. sh sharing. So, was it through a physical? And this is, this is really a rhetorical question. No, uh, but it was initially. I just had to go to the bathroom a lot more than usual, and eventually there was some blood. And you see that, and you go, "Well, hang on." Uh, I got to go to the doctor, and then it took a few appointments and a few exams and whatever, and eventually they figured out what was going on. But unfortunately, it was one of these things where, you know, initially it was like, oh, it's a polyp. We can probably remove it just with a simple procedure. And then, oh, it's bigger than we thought. Oh, there's actually more than one. Oh, it's spread to your lungs. You know, it, it seemed like every time I went, the news was worse. Uh, fortunately, once I actually had the surgery, uh, there was a point before that where I thought they might have to um, remove one of my kidneys and various other things, and that turned out not to be true. So they managed to save a lot of what, uh, what otherwise might have been had to be removed. So presuming things go well, you know, sometime next year I'll, I'll be relatively back to normal as far as, you know, various plumbing and stuff like that. Um, and it could have been worse than that. So there's some good news, but the, the thing is, if there's any history in your family, especially of, uh, of colorectal cancer, bowel cancer, endometrial cancer, uh, 
ovarian cancer, anything like that, go to your doctor and try to get screened for it. Yeah, it's kind of awkward. You know, they have to put a camera up your butt. There's well, no I, way think, around that. I think some of these people have already done that and put it online. Yeah. So I think. That, <laughs> so, uh, so not, not uncharted territory for some yeah. of us gnome dexers, so, I guess. But if you get that done and it's done early, they, they can deal with it very easily and you don't have to go through the 25 staples in your abdomen kind of mm. thing. All right, we have another question. This is Don Douglas. All right. Hi, Derek. It's good to meet you. Hi. Here. This is my first gnome deck, so I've never met you before. But um, I want to let you know, I, I have a little bit of a concern for you, just that my husband died of cancer last summer. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I... I myself was a stage three uh, cancer patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, being so public about it, I think it's great it because fun. there's not a lot of education. People aren't touched by death the way we were 50 or 100 years ago. Yeah. Used to, your neighbors died, your children died, a lot of people died around you. That's not the way it is anymore. But I don't want you to become just the ca cancer victim. You know, as soon as you feel better, you need to go out and be just Derek. You know, yeah. and, and to have this so much a part of what everybody, you know, I mean, they're rallying around you and that's great, but, you know, just try to be, an, be, be normal and don't talk about it all the time. It's just what I'm trying to get at. Well, I have tried to do that. And in fact, when I first started doing it on the blog, I intentionally said, okay, I'm not gonna turn this into the Derek Cancer blog. Now it turned into more like that because well, as my cousin said to me when I was in the hospital, we sort of talked about all my procedures and whatever, and she said, so how are things otherwise? And I said, well, right now there isn't any otherwise. Mm -hmm. But as soon as there is, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. And so, like yesterday, you know, I wrote about going to a movie. Last week I wrote about an album I was listening to. It's not like my blog is going to be all cancer all the time. And that's why I didn't, like, you know, start a cancer blog. Because there is a danger, as you said, of you know, making the condition my life, mm -hmm. which it isn't, you know, uh, and in the, t you know, in the times when I'm relatively comfortable or, or even times like now, even though we're talking about it, I'm not focused on my treatment or my condition or how things are going. And as I get better, that's going to be less and less a concern. So I, I th certainly thank you for reinforcing that because I want to make sure that I get back to being a, a regular old geek. Right. You know. If you'd like, uh, I'd love to talk to your wife. I know how hard it is. Sure. And um, <laughs> I'm my my blog is donkey. If you want, I I think it's harder for your loved ones than it is for you. It is. So, yeah. So. It is because the, the, a lot of the time they don't know what to do. Right. And they they're not right in it. You know. And uh, but certainly, if you want to get in touch with me, um, go to the, go to penmachine.com and email me and. Uh, give me whatever advice you can. <laughs> God bless. Because <laughs> I need it. Thank you, Don. Uh, Thanks, Don. Here's, here's a new guy. He just came, I don't know, he just walked in off the street. <laughs> All right. Hey, Derek. Hey, uh, <laughs> miss having you, you here. Yeah, you know who I am. We, we've, we've had uh, some good experiences, and yeah. my wife sends her love, and uh, really enjoyed having your happy face at Gnome Dicks in the past, and sorry you're yeah. not here. Yeah. Um, you have great clarity into something we're all going to experience at some point. You know, some will have some warning that we're, you know, going to die. Yeah. What, ex what, has the, what less lessons have you learned out of that that you might have wished you had done different in, in your past or, or things that you now have great clarity that you want to experience now that's different? Well, you know what's funny is it's made me realize that... Um, my life has gone pretty well so far. I'm not, I'm not sitting here going, oh, I wish I had, you know, seen Machu Picchu or gone, I don't know, naked skydiving or something like that. I, there aren't, there aren't goals that I think that I've missed. You know, I have a, a great wife, I have great kids, uh, I have a good home, my job is good, all that. You know, so what it's really told me is that I've got a, you know. If it turns out that I'm not going to live very long, I've accomplished what I would like to have accomplished, you know, before I'm 40. <laughs> I didn't have great grand ambitions for that. Um, certainly, there are things I would still like to do. Interestingly, there are places I'd like to go back to. Um, 
you know, sort of natural places here in BC and, and other places. Um, and I guess what it's really made me think about is, you know, what, what do I want to do or what do I want to have happen if I die? And uh, one of those things is I want to find a way for that to be useful. So I was thinking, unfortunately because I'm a cancer patient, you can't really donate organs because who wants those, right? If they got cancer. <laughs> um, but, you know, if somebody could turn me into one of those, like, classroom skeletons or, like, that body world stuff or use me to train medical students or whatever, that would be great. I'm not one of these people who, you know, just wants to be buried or whatever. I, I, that's not my thing. So that sort of come to me uh, as something that, that I've wanted. But oddly, I haven't, I haven't gone, well, you know, I wish I'd done this and done that. Uh, it makes me want to be a better father and a better husband and a better son um, as much as I can. Unfortunately, right now, I'm such a wipeout that I can't do very much. So I just got to make sure that, you know, I'm not too crabby <laughs> right now. And then, uh, and then as I improve, that uh, we can go do some stuff and, and have fun together. I think that's mainly the, the way I want to go. You can't see it on the screen, but I'm looking at a, a sea of faces, and they're all, all there with you. And we wish you well. All right, thanks, Bob. Um, that's interesting, uh, Robert. You first, you're the only, uh, the only male out of four, three women, one male. I think we're all kind of. I mean, like I said, it's kind of ner unnerve-wracking, unnerving, just to know that it just could happen. To well, certainly, this is the first time I think I've had that I know of uh, someone who I had a personal connection with. Um, you know, kind of get hit with this, and you seem yeah. to be taking it like I think better than I, well, I ever would. You know, the thing is, there's a, I, I, it hit me pretty hard to start with, but you can't, sort of like what Don said, you can't sort of let it consume your life and sort of say, oh my God, I'm going to die, because you don't know that. And nobody really knows that. And in fact, the way, the analogy I've used is anybody could get hit by a bus any time. I just happen to be dodging buses all day long. Um, so I, I can see the buses coming and I know what I have to do, and it doesn't mean I'm going to be able to dodge everyone, but it does mean that I have some perspective on it. And, you know, it could happen to anyone, you know, I think if somebody's like, you know, in the military in Afghanistan, or they get some, you know, weird random disease while they're traveling somewhere, or they, you know, trip and fall and hit their head on the curb. Um, you don't have warning about that sort of stuff. And I've got a bit of warning about this, and you know, the, the, the statistics are hard to measure because every time you get past one stage, they change. So right now, I don't know if I've got a year or two years or five years or 10 years or 40 years. Um, and in a way, that's kind of liberating because you're not, one of the things I'm not thinking of is, well, you know, I'm not going to put off having a good time until I'm 65 because I don't know if I'm going to get there. So may as well have a good time now. So what about your music? I haven't done much with it because it's actually one of those things I've, you know, I, um, for those of you who don't know, I recorded a lot of uh, pod safe music that anybody can use, Chris has used. Um, and I also host a podcast with Paul Garay called Inside Home Recording. And we've still been putting those out. We just put out one this week. I didn't have much to do with it because I was still pretty wiped out. Um, so I found it's just a matter of that takes that creativity takes energy and it takes the kind of time and thought that I haven't even uh, had recently. I want to do more with it, and I expect I will as I get better. But for example, um, as I left the hospital, they said, you know, for a few weeks you shouldn't lift anything that weighs more than five pounds. Now, as somebody who plays the drums and has a guitar that weighs more than five pounds, that makes it kind of tough. So um, really, it's just a matter of getting better and getting back into that headspace. Right now, I spend a lot of time listening to music, spend a lot of time uh, just watching TV, lying down, doing whatever. What's funny is I thought I would listen to a lot more podcasts, and I find that 
they're too intellectually stimulating. I find I'm watching more TV because it's more passive, and I don't need to think as much. So, <laughs> so uh, yay, podcasters, but you need to dumb down a little bit for me, okay? Dignation. <laughs> what was that? Scoble said, he said dignation. Ah, Yes. I hadn't even thought of that. Hadn't yeah, thought of that. That's right. Well, I mean, that, that's another question. I mean, your diet, I'm sure, has been severely impacted as well. Yeah. Speaking of dignation, I'm sorry for making that enormous leap. They don't eat, they just drink. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, it has, and the, I mean, I'm, I'm also diabetic, and I have been for a long time, so it makes it really complicated. Wow. The funny thing I discovered last week is, because um, I'm taking Tylenol 3s for painkillers, having a couple of other drinks like a mojito and a, and a uh, cosmopolitan, uh, they don't mix very well. Uh, so at the end of our meal at a restaurant, I actually had to put my head down between my knees and Erdy had to go get a wheelchair and wheel me out of there. Uh, so that was a little, it wasn't really embarrassing. I don't get embarrassed easily anymore, but it was a little bit, uh, it was a good lesson. Hmm. So somebody else told me, yeah, if you're taking painkillers, one pill, one drink, and that's your limit. So I'll, I'll stick to that. You said you, you gained some weight back. Uh, yeah. Was that just through a natural process or was? Well, what I have, what I. I'm sorry, process, is, process. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the diet they'd given me is actually like a fantasy diet for a lot of people. They said, well, because of the way your intestines are right now, you gotta eat nothing but white bread. Make sure you're eating lots of red meat so you get iron. Uh, you need a lot of fatty foods so that you can gain some weight and just eat as much as you possibly can. Um, so I've been eating like six meals a day and drinking those little weird you know, sub, uh, meal substitute drinks and stuff because my digestive system is actually not as efficient as it used to be. So I need to eat even more than I normally would to gain weight. So I've, I've gained probably about 10 pounds right now after the 50 that I lost. Um, so you know, I'll make sure I know when to stop, <laughs> but um, Basically, I've, uh, I haven't had too many limits other than I just got to make sure I don't feel too sick by eating too much junk. Um, but yeah, I've basically been stuffing myself, which is nice. Well, I suppose well, if you have that freedom. Yeah, for once. Now, in terms of uh, any kind of medication, I mean, you're taking, uh, is it just, just regular old painkillers or anything well, beyond are, that? There are some prescription stuff. They've got me on some anti-inflammatories and something to keep my stomach from getting too upset, and then uh, uh, the codeine, which is what's in the Tylenol 3s. But that's about it. Um, previously, I had been on actual morphine, um, previous to my surgery, because I was in a fair amount of pain, and then in the hospital. And one of the reasons I went out of the hospital and had to come back in is because I started going into withdrawal from the morphine, mm. which gave me the shakes and the chills and all this stuff. Fortunately, they managed to wean me off that when I was in the hospital again, so that uh, by the time I got out, that was okay. But uh, So that's something that doesn't normally happen, but because I'd been on it for so long, uh, my body had become somewhat dependent on it, and that's less of a risk with the coding. In terms of sharing your story, I mean, you, you only have a limited amount of energy. Uh, yeah. Do you find it, when you do have that creative spark, or do you do have the energy to create something, or like when I say create, share something, uh, do you find it easier, you've uploaded a couple of videos to YouTube, do you find that easier, creating the video, audio, text, I mean, um, well, which I is mean, more I'm intense? A, I'm a writer and an editor by trade, so naturally the writing comes to me a little easier. Uh, the video is actually Airdrie put up, I, I didn't put those up at all, she put those up while I was in the hospital. Uh, so she took those on her camera, and so I haven't done those. The Flickr photos are actually sometimes the easiest. For example, if I'm just feeling like, ugh, I can take a picture of myself going, ugh, with my little camera, the same one I'm using now, post that up to Flickr, and I'm done. I don't have to write anything. And sometimes that's all I've done, really. And then, but most of the time, if there's something, sometimes I feel obligated. And this is one reason I'm glad my dad started blogging because there were times when I was like, well, I really should let people know what's going on. Because, um, you know, I hadn't posted in like five days and nobody knows and uh. So he might have posted something which is good. 
Um, and sometimes it's just like, well, I should put something up. I sort of had a, previous to this, I sort of had a policy that I wanted to post something on average once a day. And I've been doing that for almost seven years. So I have however many thousand posts there are from that. And I've been trying to keep up that average. It's been a little slower than that, but I want to at least have something up there every couple days. So sometimes it's a bit of an effort, but usually there's some little chunk of time during the day I can find. And so there you go. All right, is there anybody in, well, first I'll ask if anybody from Overflow wants to ask a question, um, this would be very germane. And if anybody wants to ask a question in general, we can have a roaming mic if you didn't want to come up on camera necessarily. I just thought it'd be nice to have uh, Derek place a face to a voice. Um, you know, feel free to raise your hand. We've got one in the front row. Uh, this is going to be David Geller. Hi, David. Hi, I can yell at you. No, don't yell. We've got to connect to the other room. He's there. There we go. Uh, this seems like a perfect time to get back into marijuana as an adult. Uh, have you experimented with that? Stand up. I'm yeah. the front. So sorry, I, I didn't quite hear okay. that. OK. Um, <laughs> here, let me translate. You, you, don't, you, you don't need to hear anything, is it? Uh, OK. Well, um, someone in the audience there, I believe he's there, whose name is very appropriate, um, proved to be a good source for me for some of that stuff. But I, uh, I, haven't, used, uh, I haven't used as much of it as I thought, because actually the um, the traditional medications that the doctors have given me have worked out pretty well. Um, and I haven't really been in a lot of pain or had a lot of nausea or that sort of stuff um, recently. So it's more a matter of fatigue. And somehow I don't think that's something that's going to speed me up any. So uh, that hasn't been my, uh, my top priority. Yeah, okay, a uh, question for you. Uh, your children, how did you share the news and how have they been taking it? What have you been sharing with them or what have you been withholding? Well, nothing really. I mean, we, nothing, we haven't withheld anything. They're, I have two daughters, Marina and Lauren. They're seven and nine. Uh, so their understanding of it is pretty good. You know, we've explained to them right from the beginning what was going on and what that meant. I mean, they know that it could mean that I was, I'm going to die or that I won't. And actually, the BC Cancer Agency here has, uh, every few months, they do a, a kids sort of art therapy program um, that has a bunch of kids come in, and all of whom have parents or other relatives who have cancer. And they go through a whole bunch of things there, you know, that it's not your fault, you can't catch it, it's not something that. Uh, you can make worse, you know, there's a lot of things that kids might worry about that we might not think of as, as their parents. Um, so that's been very good for them. And I, you know, I think it's been helped, the, you know, what I wouldn't want to be is like wide open to the whole world on my blog and then keeping something from my kids. Because ultimately they're going to need to understand. And if things do go badly, I don't want it to be a total surprise. You know, it makes it hard for them sometimes. And it's true that they do, you know, sometimes they've acted a bit weird because of that knowledge and whatever, but I'd rather they know than not. And I think that's been my general approach with all this. I'd rather everybody know because it, in the sort of, you know, um, traditional way, you know, I guess in the old style of dealing with cancer, you know, decades ago, you didn't talk about it. But the problem with that is it means every time you run into somebody, you have to lie. Uh, you know, there are the people who know and there are the people who don't know. And I, I don't want there to be the categories of people. If somebody doesn't know, I'll, you know, I'll tell them straight away. And I think that's much healthier. It's a little easier to do, honestly, with cancer because you tell people you have cancer and everybody's sympathetic. Uh, you know, if it was something else, if it was uh, an addiction or a mental illness or something or depression, there's still a lot of stigma about stuff like that. And I think it's a lot harder for people to be as honest about it. And I wish that weren't so, because I think uh, in all those things, it would probably be more helpful to be able to be honest about it. And, you know, so for me, you know, cancer, uh, it's like a cancer card. I mean, I piece of advice for people, if you've ever had cancer, it's the best way to get rid of a telemarketer ever. 
they're on the phone, they're trying to sell you something, and you say, you know, I just got back from chemotherapy, I'm really just too tired for this. And they don't even know what to say. They're just, uh, and then you can hang up. No problem. I, I'm not going to use that. I just so, yeah. It, you know, it, it works great for me. There you go. Well, to a, to a large, but you're not on chemo now. That you're no, not right now. But right. I could still use that line. Sure. Well, hey, <laughs> you use whatever line you got to do. You just, I mean, use li, li, line. But I mean, like you know, whatever you, to get rid of telemarketers. Yeah. yeah. Um, are there any other questions, comments? This is a very, I, it's a very. There's one in the back. This is. I understand. And by the way, Derek, this is incredibly brave of you. I I can only imagine. I didn't even know if, like I said, I don't even know if I could go this far. Um, and I'm pretty, hard, I'm pretty out there, uh, well, but I understand the strength it, it number one, you know, it takes physically, but mentally to be able to share something like this, so I, 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 mean, I thank you. I, for me, it's more physical, because, if you, you know, um, as I've said, I've found a lot more benefit talking to people than I have. It's a, it, it makes me feel better to be able to share it than to try to keep it inside. So like a cathartic. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm a big ham. You know, I... Like you, I want to be out there just being famous, and you know, if I'm going to be famous for being having cancer, I guess that'll do for now, you know. Well, you know, we do kind of look like brothers. I gotta, I gotta yeah. admit, we got People the same have. glasses now. Look at that. All right. Okay, so we so do. There was a question. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Question in the back, and please stand up. I am oh. standing up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello, Derek. My name is Angel. Um, so to me, blogging is a form of storytelling. Can you and hear it, Derek? Sort of. You may have to come up here because he's, he's probably getting it through the mic, but just stand off to the side if you don't want to be on camera. Sorry. It, or you can repeat fine. the question. Or I could repeat the question. Or I could just come up. Well, I just, I know, I don't want to. Sorry. I'm trying to accommodate. Thank you. Hey. Uh, so to me, blogging is a form of storytelling, and yeah. you've ob you've been doing it for a really really long time. And when I think back to questions I have to with my parents, I always want to. They're not into blogging or any kind of internet, you know, form of storytelling. And I've always sent uh, my parents uh, tape recorders for them to kind of tell me little bits about their lives that maybe I don't know about yet. Mm -hmm. um, so outside of the kind of blog footprint, is there kind of a family element to storytelling that you're sharing with uh, your daughters that they may not know about, you know, your life like earlier on, like, you know, from, from marriage or early years or, or whatever? Um, I guess, I mean, I'll take that as, as do I have sort of separate record of, uh, of what I'm doing with my life. And no, I don't. Um, there's my blog, and I haven't kept a diary, or I haven't done videos, or I haven't sat down and told them stories directly. I thought about that sort of stuff, but really a lot of the stuff that I want to talk about, I do put on my blog. I talk about stuff that I did a long time ago that I remember. Um, and. I guess, I mean, my blog is what I have time for. And it's for them, it's for me. I mean, a lot of the time I put stuff in my blog so that I can remember it. You know, I'm like, didn't I link to something a few years ago about, you know, and then I'll search my own blog, and there it is. Um, so really, that's, that's the main resource for me, and you know, then the photos I've taken and that sort of stuff. But I haven't, I haven't set up any separate resources for that, and in fact, before blogging, I never really wrote a diary or anything like that. I wrote a lot of columns for student newspapers and, and various things like that that actually, in retrospect, were very blog thought. But um, I guess I always wanted it to be public. <laughs> I always wanted lots of people to read it. It was never something that was just for me or just for my family. So that's my approach, but certainly I think a lot of other people, they have private blogs or they have um, video diaries they might keep, and that's all great. I just don't have the time or the inclination to, to take that separate path. 
Hi, Derek. I just wanted to come Hi. and say hello and tell Hi. you how much we miss you. I enjoyed your, uh, your Charleston dancing there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I wanted to let you know, if you ever decide you want to have a slumber party, Chris and I will drive up and jump in bed with you. He's got some crazy pajamas he'd love to show you. Oh, you know, <laughs> that's an intriguing possibility. Um, I think we might have to get a bigger bed, though. There's some lines you just should not cross. <laughs> My pink bunny slippers are one of them. Uh, um, I don't really. They're blue, actually. Do you, do you have um, pajamas with feet in them? What's that? Pajamas with feet in them? I used to. Not uh, so yeah. much anymore. No, um, my, my kids used to. But. I, oh, good to know. Um, so I believe we've got, a, we've got one of your songs queued, Derek, and we okay. thought we'd, we'd play you out with your own music. This is the, Excellent. This is the Gnome Dex theme you uh, performed, wrote last year, and I don't know All if right. we played it last year, but it, it, we're playing it now, Derek. Okay. So, well... Hopefully we'll get audio. It's difficult yeah. to explain. Tell me, tell me about Gnome Dex. It's 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 difficult to explain. Tell me, tell me about it's 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 Chris and Ponzi running madly, and of course, don't you forget all the free swag to be had. But is that because everyone wants to be a gnome? Or? These are my people. Every conference that s s sucked, and I turned it around. I attended my first gnome dex at the age of six. Everything I know about life, love, and the human condition, I learned at gnome dex. If mankind can still be saved, the answers will be found among the pocket protectors and fanny packs. Please. Are my people more geeks? My geeks, well geeks. Gnome Dex is like traveling into the future. They still have beer. All our good friends at Gnome 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 Dex Six Point Zero. It's the Woodstock of conferences, podcasting, and blogging. People's eyes light up when they give each other ideas, and then they go off and talk about it. I'd like to go to Gnome Dex. A wah a wah a wah. The audience might heckle you up on the stage. And your choice of web feed format might cause a rage. You know, I think we really ought to try to blow that bandwidth, all that bandwidth, that bandwidth sky high. World's shortest heavy metal solo. Don't know what makes it so good We'd write an algorithm to explain it If we could oh, wow, wow, wow. But we can't Gnome Dex Tickets are hard to get Gnome Dex Is it Web 3.0 yet? Gnome Dex It's geeky fun Gnome Dex It keeps us out of the sun People. Tell me about Gnome Dex. If someone says, hey, can I come and pitch my product, you basically kick him in the shin. Gnome Dex. Thank you, Derek. So, Thank you so um, much. I hope to see you next year. Yes. And if you are at Bar Camp next week in Vancouver, I'm hoping to be there. Great. Thank Bye. you, Derek. Oh. Hi. Yes. See ya.